good morning to one and all uh, today's lecture topic is on quantic designs so firstly coming to the learning objectives so at the end of the lecture you should be able to outline and discuss a logical classification of quantic designs uh, you should be able to evaluate the pre-treatment assessment for selection of quantics So coming to the definition first, so a pontic is an artificial teeth on a fixed partial denture that replaces missing natural teeth, restores its function, and usually fills the space previously filled by the natural teeth. Okay, this is according to the GPT. That is a glossary of prosonantic term. So coming to a requirement of a pontic, so there are optimal pontic designs to get sorry to get an optic uh, optimal pontic design three principles should coincide which is the biologic aesthetic and mechanical so coming to the biologic uh, there should be a cleansable tissue surface uh, access to abutment teeth and no pressure on the ridge right <clears throat> so sorry these things have to be taken care of Coming to the aesthetic, so it should look like a teeth or should look like a teeth which is being replaced, uh, should appear to grow out of the edentulous ridge and uh, there should be sufficient space for porcelain. Okay, coming to the third principle that is the mechanical, it should be rigid to resist deformation of any sort or any kind. It should have strong connectors so to prevent any fractures and the metal ceramic framework should be present to resist any porcelain fractures okay coming to the pontic classification it can be classified according to three different methods which is depending on the shape of the pontic contacting the tissue uh, depending on the materials and depending upon the manufacturer's design. Okay, so based on the design, it can be mucosal contact or no mucosal contact. In the mucosal contact, there is ridge lap, modified ridge lap, conical pontic, and ovate pontic. Coming to the no mucosal contact, that is the sanitary or hygienic and modified sanitary. Okay, so we'll be discussing in detail. Based on the material used, so you can see there is a metal ceramic pontic, a resin veneered pontic, or an all metal pontic. Okay, use it a metallic. Coming to prefabricated porcelain pontics. Okay, so uh, basically these are facings. So these are commercially available porcelain pontics, which can be altered by the dentist and reglazed if necessary okay so these are like preformed pontics which are available it can be glazed and you know uh, put together in a bridge and settled okay so types are true pontic sanitary pontic steel facing slotted facing long pin harmony a reverse pin interchangeable okay so there are many types so these are basically the facings okay so example like an interchangeable uh, facing so this is basically like a you know the uh, sorry these are according to the manufacturer design guys okay so basically a man it's manufactured with a vertical slot running down the flat lingual surface so this facing is retained with the like a, a substance which engages the retain retention of the slot okay so the other when other end will have a retention key and it will be like fixed inside okay coming to like a true pontic for example it's like a horizontal tubercular slot in the center of the lingual surface of a you know facing Um, then there are like uh, 
pin facings, like a reverse pin facing, yeah. So that is like when porcelain denture teeth can be modified to be used as a bridge facing and porcelain is added to the gingival end of the facing, okay? And multiple precision pin holes are drilled into the lingual surface, okay? So it can be attached and fixed. Then there is something known as like a, a modified pin facing, yeah, something like this. Okay, so this is basically a modif it's it's modified by adding porcelain to lingual gingival area, which is facing the pin surface. Okay, so you just need to know these guys. It is rarely used now, right? Uh, this was used long back. So you can see this is a table of interest. So a metal ceramic pontic has an advantage of aesthetic and biocompatibility. Disadvantage difficult in if an abutment is non-ceramic and weaker than all ceramic. Okay. Uh, indication in most situations, contraindication, long span with very high stress okay so very long spans uh, okay coming to an all metal so here the advantage is strength it's a straightforward procedure disadvantage is non-aesthetic indications in mandibular molars and uh, especially under high stress Okay, it can be used. So contraindication where aesthetics is important. Okay, fibrine pores or all resin pontic can also be used. So these are conservative when used in inlay preparation. Is it is aesthetic and it is easy to repair. Okay, disadvantage is it has a long term success. Uh, it is to like. Uh, best suited for limited to short spans indications is area of high aesthetic concern and contraindication is long span of pities okay and facings like I told you it's rarely indicated so you just need to know yeah all right was used long back okay so pre-treatment assessment before we design a pontic has to be done and a pontic space has to be evaluated, the residual risk control, and the surgical modification, if required, has to be done. Okay, so our ideal ridge contour should have smooth, regular surface of attached and gel with adequate width and height for pontic placements. Okay, free of frenal attachment and must sustain the appearance of interdental papilla. Ideal ridge contour varies with types of pontic to be used for modified ridge lap and for ovate pontic. Okay. So for bulky <clears throat> ridge contour, a ridge may be excessive due to hard or soft tissue. For this region, surgical correction or modification comes into play for soft tissue. The access has to be removed, removed by gingivoplasty. For heart tissue, access has to be removed by osseous reduction. Okay, coming to the classification of uh, deficient ridge contour. So this is according to Siebert's classification. It's important. Please know this. Class 1 is buccolingual loss of teeth with normal tissue height. Okay, class two is a picocoronal loss of the tissue with normal tissue width. Okay, uh, class three is combined loss of the tissue in both the directions. Okay, so you can see both the direction in the apical and in the uh, width, the tissue width. Okay, coming to the different designs of pontic now. So coming to the ridge lap pontic. So it looks like a natural teeth, right? There, guys, so it seems like it's coming out of the teeth. Uh, um, the surface, the ridge. 
So large concave contact on the ridge. This is a cross section, guys. Okay. Uh, it's already generating labial, lingual, and proximal embrasure overlapping the ridge. Okay. It's very difficult to clean. It causes tissue inflammation sometimes, and it's not an ideal contact. Coming to a modified rich lap pontic. Uh, so in this, basically, the design gives an illusion of a tooth. Yeah, like that, guys. Okay. It possesses all or nearly all convex surfaces for easy cleaning. Okay. And lingual surface has deflective contact. Okay. This is the deflective contact. It prevents food impactions. Okay, so you can see it in all the angles, guys. Okay, so cross section, a frontal view, a lateral view. All right, so this is a modified ridge lap. Okay, coming to a con conical pontic, so you can see like a conical shape, right? Yes, so only the one tip will be contacting the ridge. It's rounded and uh, cleansable. The tip is small in relation to over, overall size. Uh, it's usually used for thin mandibular ridges. Occasionally used in broad flat ridge, resulting into large triangular embrasure, which collects the food debris. Okay, so as Aesthetically, it is not good. Okay, so it's basically not aesthetic. Okay, coming to ovate pontic. So indicated, this is an ovate pontic, guys. Okay, so indicated here. Yep. Indicated in the aesthetic zone, rounded tip. Okay, which is like blunt, yeah. Placed in concave part of the crest of the ridge, concave part. Concavity created by provisional restorations and used in broad and flat ridges, okay? So this is the ovate pontic, guys. Coming to a sanitary or hygienic pontic, so you can just see the amount of gap which is there, okay? So... It is very easy to clean, guys. That's why it's known as a hygienic pontic. So no contact with the edentulous ridge, sanitary pontic, used in non-appearance zone, usually in the mandibular first molars. It restores function, stabilizes adjacent and opposing teeth, and aesthetically unpleasing. Okay, so you can see the diagram. Okay, coming to a modified sanitary pontic, so you can see the amount of gap has increased. So it's an occlusal gingival thickness should not be less than 3 mm. Okay, so occlusal gingival thickness, that is only what it is. Enough space between the ridge and the pontic, uh, convex both mesiodistally and labiolingually. Okay. So the design is like a fish belly, okay? So known as a fish belly, okay? Okay, so lastly, coming to this comparison slide, which gives you the indications, the advantage and the disadvantage, which, which is important, guys. So know this. So usually the first one is the sanitary or the hygienic pontic. The space is around 2 mm, guys, okay? Used or recommended in the posterior mandible. Good access, the advantage, it has, it has good access for oral hygiene. It has very poor aesthetics, okay? Saddle rich lap, guys, so not recommended, right? It's creating pressure on the uh, ridge. Advantage, yes, it looks aesthetics. Um, you cannot maintain the oral hygiene. That is the disadvantage, okay? 
coming to the third design which is conical only the tip is touching so recommended molars without aesthetic requirements it has a good access for oral hygiene and it has poor aesthetics modified ridge lap guys uh, so it seems like the tooth is coming out of the ridge <clears throat> high aesthetic requirement it has so can be used in the anterior teeth the premolar and in some maxillary molars it has good good aesthetics and moderately easy to clean so yes this is the most ideal one which we can use the modified ridge lap guys okay Coming to the last one, which is O-weight. Uh, recommended locations are maxil maxillary incisors, cuspids, and premolars. Advantages, it has superior aesthetics, negligible food entrapment, and easy to use. Disadvantage, sometimes in some type of ridges, it requires surgical preparations, okay? Uh, so guys, please uh, understand these designs and these are important as we do FBD work and we do fill out a lab form. So it can be indicated in the lab form. Okay, thank you so much guys for patient listening and uh, kindly go through the standard textbooks at the notes. So the standard textbooks of FPD remains Rosensteel and uh, Schillenberg, guys. And uh, for any further doubts or questions, uh, I am on uh, in the Polyclinic 3 in Prosto uh, Clinic. So read and come and ask questions if you have any, guys. Thank you.